we flip a coin for who gets to buy the Homer Pepe for $39,000 and I can get the coin flip. <laughs> they didn't say that in any of the articles, that coin no. flipping. Sorry, yeah, that's amazing. Well, yeah, it was, it's a tiny little rare thing that happened like behind the scenes, you know, because we both walked up to claim our prize. And I thought I won. I thought I won. Okay, flip a coin, you know, and then. I'm very happy to have Peter Kell on the show today, and he is going to share his knowledge in the NFT space. Peter, thank you so much for coming on the channel today. You're welcome. Stoked to be here. Thanks, Jason. Right, very happy to have you. So I want to get right into it. You recently sold the Homer Pepe NFT for 205 Ethereum, worth about $320,000. And the most fascinating part to me is that you bought this in 2018 before NFTs were even really a thing. Even today, they're not really a thing. How did you get into the NFT space so early? What's your story? Yeah, uh, definitely. All right. So I, de I definitely like accidentally fell into this thing. Um, I'm not going to tell you how I got into crypto, but I'll tell you how I kind of got into NFTs on accident. Uh, maybe like, yeah, so three years ago, back in 2018, uh, I was part of the wave up um, and I built up a cool little portfolio in crypto. And uh, one of my bags at the moment was this bag called Counterparty. Um, and I had a lot of Counterparty and I was like, I really want to go meet the developers and like, you know, kind of learn a little bit more about what's going on behind the scene. And I learned that they were going to be at this event called Rare AF, Rare as Fuck. And it was like this event out of New York. And it was like the world's first digital art auction. Um, and as I was kind of coming up in crypto, I was lucky enough to like rub shoulders with some guys who were like, you know, had seven, eight figure portfolios, like massive crypto portfolios. And a lot of them were talking about Pepe Cash. And I was like, what the fuck is Pepe Cash? I don't know what this stuff is. I don't know what any of this stuff is. I would go to the website and I would like, I have no idea. This looks like a joke, but this guy's the real deal. So why is he talking about this? So it never made sense for me for the longest time. So when I heard about this event, I was like, two birds, one stone. I'm going to learn about, I'm going to talk to the counterparty developers. And then I'm going to uh, learn about this digital art shit, you know? So I go there, I meet the counterparty developer. It turns out he like quit and there's like nobody left on the team anymore. So I'm like, okay, counterparty is a bad investment. I need to get out of this bag. And then now I like pivoted my attention towards this digital art thing, you know, and they had all these speakers coming up on stage, like the, the guy who did crypto punks was on stage talking about the punks, talking about this. And they were talking about this idea with digital art and like, because I was just like everybody else, like, why the fuck is that a thing? You know, I just take a screenshot and I have it. Like, why is digital art a thing? And then they just kind of tell me like, dude, it's, it's, they, we figured out how to make like a thing behind the picture. So you have the picture, but there's like this thing, like a token behind it. So you can screenshot the picture all, all you want, but you're never going to get what's behind the picture. The picture just represents the token. And then it was like a, the light bulb moment. And I was like, oh, this is pretty sweet. You know, this kind of makes sense to me. I kind of want to dive into this. And there was like this aura in the air because they were doing this auction at the end of this event of like digital art. And it was the world's first auction. So there was this aura in the air that was like, you know what, if there's ever like a good time to get like a really cool piece of art, it's like at the world's first auction for this. Like I, they kind of made it seem like this something was going to be sold that was kind of amazing. And uh, I was kind of like, okay, let me do this. So I turned to, but I don't know anything about it. So I turned to Joe Looney. He's the guy, he was at this event. He invented uh, Rare Pepe's, rarepepewallet.com. And uh, I was like, yo, how do I know which one's a good one, right? Because you're auctioning all this stuff. How do I know what to buy, what to get? And he's like, dude, the more rare they are, the less there are, the more valuable it is. Um, so look for like one-of-ones. So like if there's a one-of-one, -one, that's kind of a big deal. And I was like, okay, one-of-one, -one, that's easy. I like that. And then all these, they started doing the auctions and there were so many different, you know, cards going. They sold the crypto punks for like, it's crazy small amount. Like it was like 50 bucks, 200 bucks. <laughs> now they're going for like 70 grand. So, but I didn't like, I, I didn't really know because there was a lot of them. So I didn't realize how more valuable they'd be. And um, then they get to this Homer Pepe and I'm like, that's the one. It was the last one at the day of auction. They're like, we're doing one last one. It's the Homer Pepe. I just love the Simpsons and the whole thing just vibe with me. And then I was like, let's do it. And I get in this crazy bidding war with this guy, um, crazy bidding war with this guy, the worst guy you want to be in a bidding war with. This is like some rich motherfucker business dude. I know from the business world and I'm just like this regular dude who got lucky and like built a portfolio. And here's some big guy like bidding against me, but I got super lucky because every time we started getting over like $10,000 for the bid, the crowd started to get super loud and there was like noise everywhere. So by the time we got to like 39 grand, um, I thought that I had won it. And then he thought that he had won it. We both went on stage like, oh, we won it. 
but we're like, oh, like we don't know who won because no one could fucking hear anything because everyone's losing their mind that we just dropped 30 like where someone's just like this is a crazy amount of money for this card. So we flip a coin for who gets to buy the Homer Pepe for $39,000 and I fucking get the coin flip. <laughs> they didn't say that in any of the articles, that coin no. flipping. Sorry, yeah, that's amazing. Well, yeah, it was, it's a tiny little rare thing that happened like behind the scenes, you know, because we both walked up to claim our prize and I thought I won. I thought I won. Okay, flip a coin, you know, and then that's what happened. I was given, you know, I was just told I was the guardian of the Homer Pepe for the last three years and apparently that's kind of it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's amazing because I know I saw in your Instagram post that I guess people were laughing at you when you bought it. Like, it, like, cause that back then that was a lot of money today. If you buy an NFT for 30, 40 K people are like, fine, that's kind of cheap. But in 2018, it was so crazy. So like you went through that whole stage, but uh, it turned out successful for you. So, oh yeah, no, I was laughed at for years after that, you know, but I thought it was hilarious too. You know, it was like kind of like a Hail Mary throw in the air. I was like, maybe this will just come back in my life. Three yeah. years later, you know, maybe it'll, maybe I'll catch it three years later somehow. I, th I still think there's going to be people today that even pay a hundred grand for something nice, maybe something from like Beeple, right? And people are laughing. And then in five years from now, when they sell it, people are going to be like, yeah. I should have done it. So I wanted to ask you, that was the, the past, right? That's an awesome story. I had no idea about the flip of the coin that kind of changes everything I thought about you. That's amazing. I love it. And then, so now we're here in the present, right? So I want to know, are you active in this space currently, right? Are you buying and selling NFTs? And if so, what are kind of your strategies or methods to find something that's valuable? Um, you know, I, you know, have a couple uh, rare Pepe's. Um, I definitely think crypto punks are a thing for sure. Yeah. And I mean, if you look at the, if you look back at the dawn of digital art, there's going to be rare Pepe's and crypto arts and uh, crypto punks for the rest of time. It's always going to yeah. be at the beginning. So those early assets are going to be worth something in the future for sure. Do I think it's crazy overpriced right now? Hell yeah. Am I trying to get in CryptoPunks right now? Hell no. But I did set a reminder on my phone, remind me to buy CryptoPunks a year from now, you know, type of thing, you know? Yeah. Because um, crypto um, NFTs really fluctuate with the market. I mean, it's a, it's a big space. There's so many things to buy. So are you kind of focusing just on, you know, like you said, CryptoPunks and Pepe's or like, are you branching out? into any other collectibles or artwork maybe? I mean, I kind of, uh, I'm just chilling right now. You know, I got my little thing. I got the sale. I'm taking a break. I got my eye on the market, you know, but it's just like, I'm not making any crazy plans, just relaxing. There's like yeah. this old saying, if you ever make like a boatload of money, do nothing for <laughs> like, in like 30 days, just do nothing. Don't it's good it. advice. I wish people would, uh, would follow that advice. Yeah. So you mentioned, obviously, right now you wouldn't buy a crypto punk because you think it's overpriced, even though you think it's valuable. So I wanted to address that part of the market, like Gary Vee, right? He's super bullish on NFTs, but he thinks that 97% of the market is overbought. So can you address this, I guess, bubble issue of the market? And also maybe in that you can touch upon the risks of NFTs and scams that hopefully people can avoid. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not like the, the NFT expert that all you guys think I am for sure. I'm just a guy who bought this crazy thing at auction and, and it just turned out to work super well. Um, I definitely understand the value of NFTs. I definitely think that there's no way that CryptoPunks, just for the example, blew up that hard, you know, is actually worth that much so quickly. So I think that's super dangerous. I do think that, you know, we're a ways out from there being a bubble popping. Um, like I think crypto at least has another maybe you know, 14 months till the bubble pops. So I think we'll be in a bull market for a long time. So, I mean, from now until then, I think it's really good. If you guys want to do what I did, which is just, you know, you hold it. Eventually there's going to be some guy. So I was the guy who bought at the top and then had nobody to sell this to for a long time, you know? So a lot of people are going to be like that, but three years later, it's yeah. going to come back for sure. Yeah. So I think that crypto punks would be worth more than 70 grand in the future for sure. Um, and that's kind of it, you know, I mean, is your strategy to flip it tomorrow, like they're a pair of Nike, like shoes, like Nikes or something, or is your strategy to like hold it for three years, you know, I mean. So when I look at anything crypto or NFT, I'm pretty against uh, like trading. I'm actually not a good trader. I'm a very bad trader. Everything I do is long term. So in long term, I don't really care if things are going down. So in the NFT space, right, I'm not an artist myself, right? So I'm pretty new to this. I'm just coming in from the crypto side. But I look at the things like the Beeples, right? And there's others out there. Those are the ones that even in a bear market, probably you won't be able to sell it, right? 
But like you said, when the market comes back, those will increase. But the things that are, I would say, not valuable, they're not going to come back. That's how I feel about the space. Yeah, so, for uh, sure. And definitely I would be, I would take Joe Looney's advice is the rarer, the better, you know what I mean? Be careful, be wary on how many cars are out there. You know what I mean? I just heard one where some guy was selling for like $700 for, you know, this picture, but they made like 1400 of them. Too you much. Know, like, that is sketchy to me for sure. You know, the crypto punks thing is cool. Cause there's only, you know, a handful of them. I forget like maybe 10,000 or something, maybe less than that, but yeah, it's different because they're like, they put like different features. So some guys have hats, some guys have glasses, some guys are aliens. And there's only like a specific amount of aliens. There's a specific, so like there's like rarity inside of, you know, the crypto pubs, which makes it cool, but definitely keep an eye out on rarity. Um, that's a huge thing for sure. Yeah, that, that's huge. Cause like you go on these sites, uh, NBA top shots, right? That's a very popular one. It's like a basketball NFT, but they have these ones that are like one of a thousand. So it's just not really worth it. Um, so definitely it's like a, a scary, risky place. I wanted to ask you though, so this space kind of blew up, right? So there's NFT art and even within NFT art, there's the, uh, you know, still art, 3D art. Now there's NFT music. There's in-game collectibles that have no use. And then ones that do have use, NFT domains, like everything is NFT now, right? So I know you're in the, in the Pepe, uh, Pepe atmosphere, right? Is yeah. there any other parts of this market that you're kind of interested in and you wanted to dive a little deeper into? Um, you know what? I'm just trying to stick with like what I think are the fundamentals. Um, it's like what happened with Pokemon, you know what I mean? Like Charizard first edition is the one, you know, like a lot of stuff is worth barely anything until you get to the end. And then the last little piece is worth a shitload. You know what I mean? Kind of like the Pokemon space, for example. And I really think, you know, I mean, there's definitely going to be an evolution with new digital artists becoming famous with new people becoming famous like that. Um, that is not my expertise. I am not able to predict that stuff. My thesis is the original stuff is always going to be the original stuff. Like it's like the treasure at Atlantis. Like there's always in the earliest days, the first city was Atlantis. That shit's yeah. worth a lot. You know what I mean? So crypto is a new revolution and it'll all come back forever till the end of time, the crypto punks. And it'll all come back to the rare Pepe's if rare Pepe gets a huge bump out of what just happened. Yeah. Well, the thing about crypto punks to me, right? I'm pretty, I guess, new to the crypto punks, but with like Pepe, isn't that, wasn't that like a thing before NFTs was even a thing? Like just that culture of Pepe. Yeah. I think you were in a, you were in a movie, right? What's it about? I mean, it's about Pepe the Frog. You know, it's about the story of Matt Fury who invented Pepe the Frog and how just um, the internet just turned this into like their fucking mascot or whatever, you know, yeah. somehow. And they just turned this into a bunch of weird ways. And some people started using it for like negative stuff. Um, but it was about the story of this frog that just went viral on the internet. The internet chose this frog to be their like Lord and savior. You know what I mean? It was weird. So yeah. it's uh, pretty cool. So I want to do some predictions, right? Hopefully this video is still up in 10 years from now on YouTube. Hopefully YouTube doesn't, you know, like get rid of all the crypto channels. So people are going to come back to this channel. They're going to watch this interview with Peter Kell and they're going to say, was he right? So 10 years from now, how do you see this space? And if you could include in that, how much do you think like the most expensive NFT will be sold for 10 years from now? Oh, I mean, you know, next cycle, I think Homer Pepe could go for in the millions. Um, but I think it could go as high as art is in the real world, um, for sure. I mean, art is a great thing, but there's some problems with it, right? Like it hangs on my fucking wall and my, some little kid could throw a fucking dart at it and ruin it, right? So like, there's a problem. If I want to ship it, it's kind of a pain in the ass to like put it in a crate and ship it around. So digital art solves a lot of problems with like, it's cool, it's art, it's rare, but hey, I can fucking pass it around. To, I can liquidate it really fast. A lot of benefits there, kind of like gold and Bitcoin. Same thing with the art on your wall and that stuff. So, um, I think just in that, the potential is just you know, is this it has the same potential as art. That's right. my opinion. well, like you said, I even think it has better potential. I, I want to use trading cards, right? If you have a physical trading card, it's very hard to keep it in shape for 50 years and then transferring it's a whole deal. The thing is, we have a ton of fake cards on the market that you may not even be able to tell the difference, right? So, you're just taking a card. And you're just making everything better with like, you know, a digital trading card. I think it's way better. Wait, but I want to hear a price number, right? Because we have paintings, 
you know, that have sold for 400 million, 500 million, right? 10 yeah. years, right? Let's say I like B plus the example. I think he's the guy, right? We'll give you a range here, but I won't right. hold you. I won't hold you to it because people might come back here and they might be like, oh, Peter didn't know. So give a wide range 10 years from now. How much will a Beeple sell for? What will be the highest price? Well, okay. Well, Beeple just did what, like three something million? Uh, I would say, you know, I, I think there could be $100 million digital art. I think it could 10x, I think it could 100x the Beeple thing. So 300 million is the idea, but I just want to back it down to 100 million. Um, yeah, bro, that's like fucking a sick yacht and a sick mansion and a fucking jet right there, just in a fucking little car. All right, so, so it's a nice range, 100 million to 300 million in 10 years. I think people will come back here and they'll say, you know, Peter Kell knew exactly what he was talking about. So uh, NFT space is uh, amazing. It's still very new to me. And also, as you mentioned, you know, even like, I guess anyone could get involved. That's what I really liked what you said in the beginning. You're like, I'm just the guy and I got involved, right? Everyone's always thinking like, you have to be some expert artist, um, no. musician or photographer. But I mean, eventually you can get there if you just kind of start today. But obviously take your time and there's a lot of there's scams in this space too you know people trying to impersonate others so uh, definitely uh exciting so i want to i want to finish off with some fun questions right cool. so i looked at your social media and i see you have lamborghinis mclarens <laughs> uh rolls royce you're always driving something new i even saw that they refer to you in some of these articles as peter lamborghini and by the way guys his name is peter kell so remember it's peter kell not peter lamborghini yeah. So right now, what is your favorite car that you have been driving? And is there a car that you want to own in the future? I mean, I've been like, you know, ever since I was a little kid, I just loved Lambos. You know, I just thought Lambos were so fun. So I have a Lambo right now. I got a Huracan right now. It's super fun. It's super great. You know what I mean? Um, I just like, I like supercars, you know? So, you know, the new Lamborghini Sion would be sick, right? Yeah. We'll see with that. But I don't know. That's it. I even, I didn't listen. I stalked your Instagram a little more. I saw, I think it was the McLaren. And you said, I'm selling my dream car to buy more crypto. I think that's yeah. what you wrote on that. Yeah. I, I like that. I'm a fan of that. No, that, you know, was, that, that was why I was able to buy Homer Pepe because I sold my McLaren and I threw it in Stellar Lumens and then it like quadrupled. Uh, and so you already, you already had these cars like years ago. Uh, yeah, I got my first dream car like three years ago, I would say, yeah. It's amazing. It's uh, in, the, in the crypto space. I'm sure you know, right? Lamborghini is like the Bitcoin car, right? When Lambo. Yeah. But I, I think there's a, a shift now to like Tesla, when Tesla, because with the whole like Elon Musk and Tesla thing, it's becoming like the car. I, I haven't driven a car or I haven't owned the car for five years because I've been living in like New York City and uh, yeah. now I'm in Mexico. But when I get a car, I think I'm going to go for the Tesla Cybertruck. What do you, what do you think about Teslas? I, I want a fucking Cybertruck. Yeah, I would love to get a Cybertruck. All right, we're going to make it. Guys. If I were to get a truck, I would get a Cybertruck for sure. Yeah. So everyone watching right now, we're officially getting rid of when Lambo. It's when Tesla. Tesla is the <laughs> new car of everyone that's crypto. Okay, we, that's it, right? So um, yeah, guys, this is uh, Peter Kell. That's his name, not Peter Lamborghini. And if <laughs> anyone wants to follow you, where do you want them to go to? Uh, Instagram, Zippy101. I also have a YouTube channel. Uh, just type in Peter Kell. You'll find me. You'll find me. Just type in Peter Kell. Right. I'll, leave, I'll leave links on the video so uh, everyone cool. can go there. And uh, really, man, it was awesome having you on the show. I love the uh, coin flip. It really changes everything for me. So thank you so much for being here. Sick. Yeah, cool. Thanks a lot, Jason. Great to have you. Good to be right, here. Awesome.